In this short practical, we will go over the internals on the most common layers of a convolutional neural network. We will start with looking at the spatial convolution layer, where we can find the padding, stride, channel and kernel size parameters. Moreover, we will get acquainted with the 4D kernels that are called weight and the 3D feature maps, which are called output. The same we will do for the NN ReLU, the Rectifying Linear Unit Nonlinearity. And we will see how the 3D feature maps look like. Finally, we will see the NN Spatial Max Pooling, where we again see the padding, stride, channels, and kernel size parameters. And then we will visualize the 3D feature maps. Let's see now, in greater detail, the last neural network architecture we have presented in the previous lecture. We can start Kilua and require the env uh, display package. Then I can set torch.manualseed to zero so that uh, all the values will be uh, random but still will be uh, all the same for every trial. Then I can uh, require my three convolutional pooling architecture we had defined in the previous lecture. And finally, I require the image package that will allow us to see uh, some internals of these networks. Our input X will be the classical LENA, uh, which we will rescale. to 256, 256. So we can print X and we have three channels RGB, 256 pixels in height and 256 pixels in width. We can visualize this image with image display image equal X and legend equal my input X to the network. We can have a look and here she is. Now we can um, ask to print the size for example of when I forward to the network our input X. We fixed 1000 classes. I will display the network in half split screen so that we can keep an eye on the uh, layers. So I can do require pretty and then net equal require the com pool. So if I print just net, it's gonna give us the whole net def network definition. And let's say if I'd like to get the first module, I can do net get first module. And here we have the spatial convolution. And if you'd like to see the internals, we can use the curly brackets, curly brackets operator. And we see what's inside. But I will use this uh, lower screen just for displaying uh, the network architecture. So we can go here. For example, we can display the first module. So what we see is that we have uh, three input planes because we get the RGB input. We get six output planes because that's where we decided uh, to have the first convolution shooting at. Then we have a stride of two in uh, height and a stride of two in width as we have set. And then if we check the kernel size, kh and kw, there are 5 and also 5, as we said. We see that the kernel is 4-dimensional. We have 6 as m1, 3 is the n1 as the input, and 5 and 5 are p1 and p2, uh, respectively. Moreover, the grad weight will have the same dimensionality, of course. And we can also check that the dimension of the output 
it's a 3D tensor, so Y is a 3D tensor of 6 maps, M1, of height M2, 128, times M3, 128. Moreover, we can see the bias term, which is a singular vector, is a 1D tensor of 6 elements, which is uh, 1 for each of the 6 maps of the output Y. Grad bias will have the same dimensionality. Let's display now this kernels. This network has not been trained, so the kernels will be uh, completely random. We will see later how the kernels of train network will look like. So to visualize the kernels, we can simply do image.display. My image is going to be equal net get one dot weight. Then we can say legend equal k1, so the kernel of the first convolution. We also apply a zoom of 18, otherwise we don't see anything, uh, otherwise they are 5 pixels by 5 pixels. We can also uh, use some padding to distinguish uh, one kernel to the other. And here we can see the uh, 6 kernels of 5 pixels by 5 pixels of the first convolutional layer. In order to display the other layer's output, I will write a helper function uh, which is going to shorten uh, the typing. So I can write function show my layer L and the text T. So we'd like to print uh, the layer L and then we are going to have image uh, image it's equal to l dot output and then we have legend equal my text t and then we have scale each equal true which is gonna basically um, set a dynamic range for visualization for each of these separate maps and end so now we can show um, net get first and the first output of my first convolution I will call y of the first convolution uh, let's see how it looks like and here it is so this is the output of the first convolutional layer each of these maps are being produced by convolving these five kernels with the input image RGB here let's get back here and let's show now uh, number two. So let's check what's number two. We have net get two, and text is going to be y because it's a value. So it's going to be y one with a plus. Uh, we can send enter, and we can see here that the dimensionality of the output is the same. So it's six times 128 times 128, and if we check the result we have that the uh, maps are simply been zero when the values were negative so we can see a greater deal of black because all negative values are now zero um, before the black was the center value since the values in the first uh, output of the convolution can range from the negative to the positive range now everything has been clipped uh, to zero that it, whatever was below zero Let's keep going. So let's show now net get three. What is three? We can check here. Net three is the next convolution. So this one is going to be y two, and we see that the input planes are six in this case, not three anymore. Output planes are also six. Therefore, the weight, the kernels are six, which is the m one. Six are n one. 5, 5 are the height and width. We can check now the result, and this is the output of the second convolutional layer. Let's go back here. Uh, so after the number 3, we are going to have number 4, which is a relu, so we simply have a plus here. And if we check, we are going to have this one. Again, all the values below 0 have been zeroed. And the final point is going to be 
number five, which you can see it's a pooling layer. So this is gonna be a pool of the Y2 plus. We can see now that the stride D H and D W are two, and the kernel of the pooling uh, running window are also two and two. Therefore, the output has dimensionality still six, the same number of channels, but is 64 and 64, whereas the input or the output of the previous layer was six times 128 and 128. We can check the result, and here we have pool of y2 plus. Let's finish with the last. Uh, three layers. So we have the last convolution, so it's going to be layer 6 and this is going to be our third convolution. It's basically identical of the second convolution. We have uh, input plane 6, output plane 6, a stride of 1, 1 and the kernel size is 5 and 5, padding is 2 and 2, so we preserve dimensionality. The input was 6 times 64 and 64, and now the output is going to be also 6 times 64 and 64. And if we check the result, here we have the y3. Uh, we keep going. So after the convolutional layer, the number 6, we are going to have number 7. which is our non-linearity. And we can check the result here, y3 plus. We have that, again, the maps with values below zero have been zeroed, and only the positive feature have been sent uh, forward. And finally, we have layer number eight, which is going to be the pool of the output of the three. And here we see that the um, output is going to be 6 times 32 and 32, whereas the out input was 6 times 64, 64. And if we check how it looks like, and here we have the tiny small last map, the last two steps would simply uh, have those little pixels just reshape into one big long vector. So we can actually uh, print net um get number nine and we see here that we have just one big vector of 6144 elements and the last one we have the last linear layer which has of course a matrix of 1000 in height and 6144 in width and well, it would be 6,145 if we would consider also the bias uh, together with the matrix. And that's pretty much it. In the next tutorial, we will see more advanced architectures and the underlying principles on which they are based.